Well, normally I would go play basketball at my grade school. I love to do that. And uh, I couldn't do that for a couple of years, actually. But I love going back to my grade school, Robert Gray. And it always brings back great memories, except for when I watched Andy Craven's dad, our baseball coach, die in front of me at the baseball diamond practicing for the championship. He said, Matt, I don't feel good, and I'm going to lay down. He laid down right back of the backstop, and I was hitting balls out to the people in the field. It was like fielding practice. And I said, are you okay? And, and he started kind of screaming and uh, started turning red and turning. He turned bright purple and I was screaming at the top of his lungs in pain. And I said, we got to go. There, get somebody go to the, get everybody go to a different house and call uh, the fire department, which is a mile away, too far to walk. And uh, nobody was home. It was on a Sunday. That's when families got together or did stuff or was in church, 1969. And uh, so I watched him pretty much pop. Oh, my hair. I used to, I used to shave my head, but I'm not shaving my head for nobody. This is all from covid I want to remember that time. It put me on a new path. But uh, my new path, playing basketball, I go back there and shoot baskets. I shoot nine on each side because there are nine planets in our system. And uh, I get my exercise between that and exercise bike and playing drums three times each a day. I'm in pretty damn good shape. So, uh, keep on rocking. So, while I'm here, yeah, hello, Penny Busman. Hello, Debbie Hawkins and Denise. No, no. <laughs> while I'm here, I want to say, like, Hobo Kelly. Hello, Debbie Dawkins and Denise Dawkins and Penny Busman and Bill Hoffman, and Gail James, and Michelle Banco, and Ted Karasik, and, <clears throat> well, it's, those are the ones I talk to the most here from Robert Gray, and uh, I always think about you when I'm at the school. I went in, inside, it was open one day, I went into the gym, and boy, they changed it. <coughs> oh, here's a funny story. A real Wonder Years story. It was basketball, and then, like, in 1969, with civil rights, they started busting kids in from the uh, what they called the valley which was like Corbett John's Landing which was all biker town pretty much and also black children from the North Portland because Portland was segregated like crazy you couldn't own a house rent a house or buy one outside of the North Portland area oh Kurt Green Martin Jennings Tony Graham Paulette McMurray, Naomi Cross, who I saw, she was married to a guy that lived at the villa in 1985, I managed it on uh, Mississippi and Russell. So, okay, I was talking to this guy named Chuck Painter. <coughs> I was talking to this guy named Chuck Painter, who was in a locker next to mine and this guy Randy Cook came up and he didn't like me talking to him for some reason and so he said don't talk to my friend he was from the valley both these kids were so it's basketball season and we're in the locker room and the younger kids practice before the older kids so we're done with practice getting changed and 
then Randy Cook shows up, and this one kid says, Man, Randy Cook's here. He's going to beat your ass. And I said, oh. So they all left. It was just like a, a sitcom, like the Wonder Years or Leave It to Beaver. And they're waiting outside in the hallway. And I'm trying to get out of there really fast. So I put all my stuff in the basket, and I turned around, and boom, I walked into a court, this big part of the wall. Didn't think of anything of it. I put my basket in, locked it up, and went out in the hallway. He didn't, Randy Cook didn't even look at me. And they said, he hit you. And I said, no, I ran into a wall. <laughs> right. Yeah, it really happened. The next day, I come to school with the biggest, blackest shiner, black eye. And people said, see, he hit you. And the principal, Mrs. Fisher, saw me, and she thought Randy Cook had hit me. And I tried to convince her, no. She said, well, we'll take care of him. And she suspended him, for, gave him three days off school, really. But that same night, I was going to go to my first concert. I, it was 1971, actually, because I was 11 years old. and went to the Paramount with Bill Hoffman to see a band called Can't Heat, who I really liked, still do. I met Henry Vestine at, down in Eugene when I played once, and he was a complete jerk. And <laughs> so we go to the Paramount Theater. My mom brought me and Bill Hoffman off, and my grandpa was a, he made glasses. He gave me a pair of glasses that turned dark in the sunshine. So I wore those because I didn't want to show my black eye. And uh, we're at the concert, and next to me is a big guy in an army jacket and long, long hair. And he pulls a bottle of Annie Green Springs out of his belt that he snuck in, handed me it. I drank some. And we're sitting there, and then he's lit up a joint, and I'd never smoked pot before. And he tries to hand me the joint, and I tell him, No, I'm allergic. <laughs> My allergy definitely has cleared up since then. I kept trying that. I said, he didn't, understand. he didn't hear me. I said, I'm allergic. But uh, that's the story about the black eye and Andy Craven's dad. And, uh, oh, I said, David Kardowski. You know, I, I was not a fighter. I was ready to defend myself. And on the football field, I did a lot of damage. I think I was in seventh grade and... David Kardowski went to kick me, and so I immediately just grabbed his leg and, and lifted him up. And I actually got some air, and he fell down and damaged his back. <laughs> and uh, they hauled him off. It was an accident. Uh huh. And, oh man, speaking of accidents. <clears throat> I'm the reason that uh, catchers have to wear helmets in Little League Baseball. I couldn't run fast. I was a fat kid. And this time I was like nine years old. And I dropped way back in the batter's box so I can hit it to right field. A guy told me if you drop it back in the batter's box, you can hit the ball to the right field. And they always put the worst players in right field. So... I had an aluminum bat, a red aluminum bat, and I swung with all I could and hit this, what I thought was a baseball, as hard as I could hit it, and it made a good clink, and I started running and didn't look back until I got to third base, and my coach said, no, no, Matt, hold, stop. You know, was it foul? And no, what I did was I hit the guy, the catcher, smack in the back of the head as hard as I could swing. Whoops. <laughs> yeah, yeah, stories about Robert Gray. Remember the, do you remember the uh, President's Fitness Award thing with Mr. Bird? You'd have to run the 440 around that field, that, that break an ankle field, <laughs> and do pull-ups, climb the rope, Bill Hoffman could climb that rope ladder like nothing, just shitting up the rope. 
And uh, all I could think of was I lost my virginity to a tetherball pole in my backyard. And uh, so I tried to climb the rope, you see. Then I came home, and I thought, I'll try to climb the tetherball pole. So I climbed up, and it, by the time I got all to the top, what I had was an orgasm, but I didn't know it. It felt really good, and I shook. And I thought, oh, that's fun. I climbed that tetherball pole every day after school for months. <laughs> and, uh, well, I think we'll do more stories next time. Remember to vote for Kamala Harris and Tim Waltz. You won't regret it.